last night we got in late so I was unable to get some video but here is the tenting area and they've got a bear box right there in front we were tenting way back there on a flat spot but here's the shelter we were the only ones here last night and it got nice and cool so we were able to bring out our sleeping quilts um, but I think it got into the 50s last night which is really nice but inside the roof looks really good and the floor yeah it looks it's really nice in here and then they've got a picnic bench so close but maybe people were using this as a step up into the shelter and then I think over that way is the privy and that's about it oh and then the water is just down this trail and I'll add some video of the water source but it was really nice and quiet last night really had a good night's sleep but we were also both really tired because it was a long day it wasn't really a lot of high elevation yesterday but it just seemed grueling for both of us and so we zonked out really quick anyway we're gonna eat some breakfast and then hit the road we're going into Damascus today Our tent site is just up there a little ways and I was getting kind of concerned when I came down these stairs to get water and I saw this and I thought oh boy I'm gonna have to kind of scoop some stuff out of this marsh but then I looked up and there was a little pipe it's kind of cool someone had rigged this up and it goes way back in there somewhere that's very nice that they did that. Made it really easy this morning. This preview review is dedicated to Corey, who's one of our viewers who really enjoys watching these reviews. This one has a little pull handle. And inside, as you can see, is open top and bottom. There's the privy. Nothing fancy about this thing, but it sure is clean. And it looks like a nice new roof put on it. Yeah, this is really good for one of these open air privies. So, Corey, I hope you like this one. I think I'd give this one hmm, probably a, a 9, 10. It's, it's pretty close. Pretty clean. No spiders. I know you'll enjoy that part. Let's go ahead and close this up. Of activities out here, I guess. Fly fishermen just down below the trail. So the Appalachian Trail joins up with the Virginia Creeper Trail. We go across this fine bridge. It goes Laurel Creek. The Virginia Creeper Trail was a old train uh, track. That I guess they converted, and you can see from the train, bicyclists going by, you can see from the trestle, this is left over from the train. Very nice. We're thinking if you're doing a strict through hike, you'd follow the Appalachian Trail. However, so at this point, we're doing walking tourism, and if we do come back and do a through hike, we would not want to do the Virginia Creeper. So, we're thinking we're going to do the Virginia Creek for just to experience it while we can. But let's find out how that works. Some 
dedicated to Luther C. Hassinger, president of Hassinger Lumber Company, Incorporated. Built and operated sawmill in Conorac from 1906-1928 in recognition of his contributions to early day development of this area. Or the area. Yep, this is where we're becoming rebels. We're not going up there. We're gonna stick on this, find out what it's all about and experience the creeper trail. See if she stays happy. Either way works. Either way works. I'm sure we'll come back and do this at some point. This gives us a chance to see both. Uh, if we follow this trail, Appalachian Trail, that's 13.5 to Damascus. I have no idea what it is here. Looking online at maps, it looks like they kind of somewhat parallel each other, but it's a train grade, so it's probably a little bit easier. I don't know. We'll find out. Well, naturally, I don't see one come out into the sun again. There's a number of fish down there, and they're good size. I'd say even maybe foot to foot and a half for some of them. Down there underneath the rocks. Until they move, uh, you can't see them. I take my eye off them, and, and they're gone. But there's some big trout. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to be able to show you. These little suckers are huge. This was a nice surprise. We just got out of the trail. And there was this little cafe. Out in the open. How convenient. It was lunchtime too. So we decided to stop and have some lunch. I think we've still got how many miles to go? About nine? Something like that. About nine that. miles to go. But what a nice surprise. Halfway through our trip into Damascus. There's this little cafe. And look at the view they have. They've got this little pond out here. It's really cute. Norfolk Western Camp Car 1940-1960. Camp cars used in rural locations where motels were not available. Crew usually consisted of six workers and a cook. Car had bunk beds, kitchen, potbelly stove, and a primitive toilet. The car was brought to a siding on Monday, picked up on Friday. The workers that stayed in the car performed maintenance on the railroad. And it's been turned into something for their community center. Yeah, just something on the side of the, the trail. We're still in Taylor Valley, just down from the Hellbenders Cafe. Getting distracted as we go. They had a restroom, so we're not distracted by that. But there's always an option for being distracted by that with hikers. Beautiful. kind of in the light over here. These are smaller. Maybe six to eight inches. Pretty trail thing. Well, you'll see all kinds of things on this trail. The trail goes through the streets in Damascus. Trying to get to the uh, 
hostel that we're going to. I've got a full bladder. Jane's hurting from that uh, road walk. I mean, it's not a road walk on the creeper trail, but it might as well be. Those are actually a lot tougher than, than trail walks in many ways because you don't get any variation for your muscles and your feet. So your feet start feeling like mushed hamburger and your muscles get fatigued. But this is Damascus. Coming from the north. <laughs> 